Well, guys, we're back out here with our Scania. Aaron and I are going to go for a little drive, and he's going to see if he can drive this thing, right? So this is a European truck, completely different than any of the way the Euro uh, American trucks drive. So batteries down again. Got to get some, put some good batteries in it because they keep going dead, but we're going to figure it out. Aaron's got our good old jump packs on there. Let's, uh, you got them both activated. Yep. Ready? I think it's in neutral. Something ain't right. Not try it. You ain't got that one gonna good, very good connection. Let's try that now. Try it again, here we go. Yeah. Oh, there we go, just live. So a lot of people are questioning the rust, right? I'm gonna get up close and personal. Before I let Aaron drive, we're gonna drive down the road, and he, I'm not gonna tell him how I'm shifting, but I'm gonna let him observe, and uh, then I'm gonna hand him over to the helm here, and let him drive the old unit. You know something I didn't know, guys, is this thing has a—I uh, don't know what this is called, but maybe this is the driver log books where you can't skirt around it; it kind of just does it automatically. A tachograph. I think that's what this is called. I'm not sure. Very crazy looking. I've always wondered why there was like a key thing in here, but that's, that stuff's all busted and doesn't work anyway, so who knows? You could we got our what your top speed is going down the road, so yeah. I know you're not speeding. I don't know, maybe it's like a logbook. We also got the uh, parking brake fixed, so when we set that, we're not rolling around no more. That's like the uh, oh shit handle, you pull on that, you start sliding sideways, <laughs> literally. So uh, we got some check engine lights on here. Cooling temp is good. I don't know why that light's on, but uh, let's go drive. All right, I got to record him shifting so I can figure out how to. Oh, now you're cheap. <laughs> Folks, I threw this clumsy, big, dumb American, the keys to my European truck. That's, for, that's for what they think of us, driving this truck around. A bunch of dumb Americans. Uh, my brother, I and no uh, he has no matters. idea what he's doing. This is a road a lot of us here in the town have learned to drive manual on or just drive in general. So we're done goofing off and whipping donuts. We're going to try to drive this thing. It doesn't have a fancy All right, take the park. Gear take the in. parking brake off. There you go. All right, see if you see what you got. I didn't pay enough attention. Oh, what? What the? Oh, we got one gear. Oh, two gears. Wrong gear. Backwards, backwards. There you go. 
Okay. No, that's it. You only have three. Flip the thing up. The splitter. The splitter, Aaron, right here. There you go. Let off. Press the clutch in. Clutch. Clutch. <laughs> God, wrong gear. You're, the, you're like the highest. Yeah. Now pull it back. There you go. Okay. There you go. So there's only three gears on top, three on the bottom. You gotta, use, you gotta press the clutch for everything. There you go. All right. We're off and moving. We haven't died yet. <laughs> oh, whoa, shoot. Now go forward, clutch. There you go. Hopefully there's no one behind us. Good Lord. I know, right? Look at all the crops in the field out there. It's like sorghum. So we're right next to the county dump, too, and it freaking stinks. This is the first time I've floored. I've never let anyone drive this truck yet. So you're very, very fortunate. Oh, gosh, that sun is so bright. You see what you're doing? Whoa! Oh, shoot! Golly! Oh, my gosh, the dash is showing 30. I know, we need a new, uh, whatever that oh, thing is. We got some folks from over and uh, across the pond sending us some cool parts, so. See, I know we're going at least 30 mile an hour, but that's kilometers an hour. I know that's wrong. Yeah, that's way wrong. Figuring it out, you gotta use the clutch. You found a neutral? I found another neutral, yeah. There you go. You press clutch in. Did you break it? Unless it's just caught between the Clutch. Press clutch. Ah, there we go. All right, go. <laughs> We're holding up traffic. All right, guys, so we made it back to the shop. And uh, Aaron, hey, whoa. Chill out. Come on. <laughs> Okay, he's trying to be funny now. Um, I want to go give you guys a history lesson on this truck. So a lot of people that are from European countries across the pond, it's hard. I don't like grouping you all together, and I'm sorry about that. But for us dumb Americans, uh, I've never been over there. And there's so many little countries in such a tiny area. And then that kind of explains why this truck is so short. I think it just looks so crazy driving around with no uh, fenders and stuff on. It kind of looks kind of cool. Maybe we whip a donut right here at the shop since there's not a whole lot of stuff to worry about. We should try it. I don't know. Man, nah, maybe we shouldn't. We Once we get all this stuff out of here, then we'll try it. I think that's that we'll, we can work that out. But uh, for now, uh, let's talk about the history of this truck. So this here, Scania 540-144, I'm looking at it because I'm not really that familiar with it, was originally brand new in 1997, was originally purchased by Ronnie Schuster's, which is a crazy big trucking company um very prestigious trucks i'll put their instagram information here sorry the bumps here really bad and some photos on the screen here and their fleet is insane of over 20 plus scania and volvo trucks and they are beautiful um just amazing trucks and this is one of the original trucks and since i bought this truck and started doing videos with it, the outpour of photos and videos that have been supplied to us of this thing back in its heyday when it was a prime perfect shape show truck is absolutely mind-blowing and it's absolutely upsetting to see it in the condition that it is now because you guys are getting to see what this truck truly looks like bare bones and it is in really rough shape um, it's really unfortunate we've been looking so hard to find um, a newer Scania to import I'm still working out all the details on like the import laws because I really want to get a new one here but I really want it to be a manual I know you can get like a 730 and a 770 I believe maybe I'm saying that wrong but they're all automatics. I'd rather go with a little bit lower horsepower that we can turn up, but have a manual gearbox to go in there so we can have fun with it. And doing uh, towing and stuff, running trailers here in the US with this truck really is gonna be out of the question for quite a while because we were out driving it and heard an air leak start. And if you move this air tank the right way, I think that's where it is. an air leak starts to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, air tank flopping around right there. Gonna have to get some new batteries in it. Um, 
I'm still working out details to find out if we're going to make this thing a twin screw or what the plan is. Maybe we add some frame length to it and put a lift axle so it looks like it's twin and still go with the American style fuel tanks and clean the frame up. I have not decided yet. I do think cleaning this frame up, making it look better would definitely be a good option because trying to cut all that and move all these different ABS modules and all these different things around is definitely going to be some major work. I can hear an airline leaking somewhere, but hey, dumb American, what'd you think about driving your Scania the first time? I'm gonna think. I'm thinking I'm gonna stick with my uh, dumb American truck transmissions at least. It was very nice driving in that truck, but it took me a second. I, I did figure out the top four gears; they were fun. Yeah, yeah. With what little power they had. Top six gears. Top six gears. Yeah. Because there's three gears on top well, and only, bottom, I and only they all really split. used the top four, but you know. So it's, I still have no idea how it shifts. I'm still going to figure that out. Oh yeah. Big difference compared to like the Tratter Taxi, which has an 18 speed blue I mean, collar, has a super 10 transmission in it. I mean, it's very similar to the 18 speed, just nothing like it. It has the same two toggle switches, yeah. but that's it. And then our Freightliner over there we got has got a 10 speed straight gear. And then of course Brutus over there has got an 18 speed in it. Cause that's all we run around here is 18 speeds in our mm -hmm. Peters. Cause it's 18 and over here in America. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyhow, like, so just, you know, every, every time I look at the Scania, I see more issues it's got. Like the bushings here um, for the cab controls are all completely shot. Like the air ride for the cab does work like it's supposed to, but just lots of issues going on in there. And it's crazy how complicated these trucks are. Like as far as the systems on board in 1996 compared to what we had here in the U.S. in 1992, right? So... Uh, my fellow viewers that are watching this that are not Americans. Oop, this thing's about to fall and break on me. Look at the frame back here, right? You can see all the crazy wiring and modules in this thing. Whatever that thing is, whatever that is. All this crazy stuff, right, that's in this, right? Now let's go look at Blue Collar, the American cab over from 1993, which really isn't that much older and they still made this similar model up to like 96 or 97 so looking over here at this thing of course we have a deck plate which covers a lot but there's not a whole lot going on back here there's no electronics back here there's no abs modules just have a air distribution block there for our brakes and that's kind of it i mean back here you'll see some of my ragtag wiring for our lights that we've got in the truck but uh Nothing crazy. There's not a whole lot going on back here. So that's the only thing that does scare me. If we do go to swap an American rear axle assemblies in there, we'll look at those flat spotted tires. You'll have a lot more room to work with though. Yes, you're not lying. Man, those are bad. I wonder when that happened. Look at that guys, holy cow. Were you drifting this truck? No, I wasn't. This is the axle that usually like locks up and drags around, so. If you're not pulling anything and it's not the drive axle hook to the engine, these can lock up versus the front line. Yeah, I know. Crazy. And then, like, moving over here to, like, the blue car. I'm oh, not blue collar. I'm sorry, the Tratter Taxi. This truck's completely covered. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, you know, you can, our non-American viewers can see the truck here. What's going on with it, guys? So this is our show hauler, I call it. The keys are probably inside, aren't they? It's locked up. We keep this thing locked up because it, uh, yeah, go grab them right quick. Yeah. All right. So here's the inside of this beauty. So this is an American show interior. Well, you know, pretty close to some of the top show interiors. House carpet inside this bad boy. Just beautiful. Nice clutch pedal. See the, see that big old shifter right there? It's because our transmissions are non-synchronized. Yeah. And uh, the whole back of the sleeper is all done up. You want to open that door up? I'll flick the lights on. American style dash in here, the new digital dash right there. We've got a bunk bed back there, a rather regular bed down below, so two people can sleep in this thing at night. Boom. Big old sound system back in there, you can't see it. But uh, it's just done up really, really freaking nice. On the other side over here, we've got a generator. Our fifth wheels for show trucks are aluminum. Big old fiberglass fenders composite fiberglass so this is what's called an apu auxiliary power unit and that thing right there powers the truck at night so you can sleep without running the big engine since we have all this frame to play with this truck is literally twice the length of the scania oh yeah at least 
Yeah, the cab to the nose and then this part to the back. At least the length of it. Moving on over here to big old Brutus, our new 2024 Peterbilt 389. Uh, a lot of people say this isn't heavy spec. It is, blah, blah, blah. It's got a 14,000 pound front axle, 44, I'm sorry, 46,000 pound rear axles, double frame. So here in America, you get your outside frame and then you have another frame liner. Some people like to call it different. People call it different things. So sorry about that. The sun's kind of giving us a weird glare, but you can see the frame line right there. And that's from the back of the truck all the way to the front. Much larger tires. There's like a 46 inch 11R 24.5 uh, tires. Nice, big, pretty aluminum fuel tanks exposed. Thank you, Biden, for the uh, pea juice coming out my stacks. But uh, stacks are active on this here truck. Big floater tires. And skating has got the floaters on the front too. Yeah. But, you make uh, sure to burn your arm every time you get out of the truck because the stacks are real. Yes, yeah. these are real and they do work. Don't grab them they trying work. to get in. <laughs> Our headache rack, you know, this is just the typical work truck here in America. Which is crazy because, you know, trucks like that are pretty standard for work trucks, too, in uh, Europe. Well, guys, that's a wrap of Aaron, the American standard truck driver, driving the European truck over there. Lots more videos coming to the Scania. We're just waiting on some more parts to show up before we start digging into it and really getting to the meat and bones of the truck. We've done about all we can with this truck as far as just showboating around, goofing off. And, I mean, I'm sure we can find something else. Maybe we get Amber to try to drive it. I don't want her to show me up either because you might actually tell her how to show me. Yeah, she might definitely show Aaron up. I'm going to roll some footage of like videos and pictures that have been submitted to us of the uh, Scania truck over the years, guys. Make sure you all smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. See you later. Peace.